Yo, what's cracking, everyone? Eric Ship Triple One here, back again with another episode of Hidden Secrets, Glitches, Easter Eggs that you, the subscribers, have sent in. This is a series where you send me interesting things you have found in the game, and the ones which are the most unique and haven't yet been showcased on my channel will possibly get a chance of being featured in a future episode. To send me the things you have found, make sure to either write them down in the comment section down below or direct messaging them to me through Instagram, Twitter or Xbox, either by describing them or recording it in video form. Please just make sure that it is in the best quality possible so it can be used in an episode. All of the links will be down in the description below and hopefully I'll see some of you guys in the next video. So let's take a look at five hidden secrets, Easter eggs and glitches in Forza Horizon 4. Starting off with number one, Sega Rally Easter Egg. So recently, I've been replaying Forza Horizon 4 right from the beginning just to see how the game is two and a half years on with all the new features brought in along with playing it on the new Xbox Series X. And I gotta say, it's been pretty fun so far. A vastly different experience to what I had remembered back in 2018. Anyways, the reason why I mention this is because within one of the Horizon stories, there is a chapter from Larissa campaign that actually resembled an old arcade game that I used to play called Sega Rally Championship that was released back in 1994. Now looking at the demographic of my channel, chances are many of you probably haven't even played or heard of this game. Well, it's an arcade rally racer with a choice of two vehicles, the Toyota Celica GT4 or the Lancia Delta. And when you are in a race, the co-driver would direct you by saying this. And of course, in this particular chapter, not only are you using the Lancia Delta, but Larissa also says the exact same phrases from the Sega Rally game, like Very long, easy right. Easy left. Oh, and also once you complete the chapter, she also says game over exactly the same as how it was said in Sega Rally. I can't believe I didn't pick this up the first time, but for those who didn't know, now you have an idea of just how old I really am. <laughs> Number two, different upgrade icons. So for those who have upgraded to the Xbox Series X, when you are in the upgrade menus, you will notice a few icons that are different, most notably from the tires and rim section. As you can see here, this footage is from the Xbox One X and the tire and wheel icon just simply shows one example, whereas on the Xbox Series X, it shows a pair of tires and wheels along with a full set of rims. Now, I'm unsure if the Series S is the same, but this wouldn't be the first time we have seen it on a Forza title. Back in Forza Motorsport 7, it was very similar. I believe if you played Forza Motorsport 7 on the original Xbox One, the tires and rims upgrade section would only show one wheel, whereas if you played it on the Xbox One X, which of course at the time was an upgrade, the same menu would show more than one wheel. I wonder why this is the case. If anyone have any answers or speculations, please share them down in the comment section below. I would love to read your opinions. Number three, who are these Drivatars? So ever since the introduction of Drivatars in Forza Motorsport 5, whenever we are in an offline lobby from Forza Horizon 2 onwards, you will see AI drivers with real gamer tags that is supposed to quote unquote mimic the way the actual player of the gamer tag drives. Here are two gamer tags you most likely would have encountered in the past at least once, and that is Flawless Cowboy and Geek Monkey 13. Now, I have to admit, I can't find anything on who Geek Monkey 13 is, but this gamer tag has appeared so many times, especially recently since I've been replaying Horizon 4, but I suspect it's somebody that works at Playground Games, much like Flawless Cowboy. For those who don't keep up with the live streams or check out Twitter, Flawless Cowboy is Mike Brown, the creative director of Forza Horizon 4. So next time you get in a race with a driver AI creative director of Forza Horizon 4, make sure to not only beat him, but tell him to bring in the Toyota Chaser and Honda Civic EG6. 
I'm only kidding, but I'm sure there are more gamer tags taken directly from people who worked on this series, but I just don't remember the others. Number four, is the steering wheel wrong? So as we all know, the Koenigsegg Yesco will be made to unlock on New Year's Eve. However, with the introduction of Super 7, we have managed to get a taste on how this Yesco drives, looks and feels. One question I do have is of course the steering wheel. Now the steering wheel on the Yesco is rather unique. The display itself is actually on the steering wheel and from real life videos, what I have noticed is that when you turn the wheel left or right, the LCD display in the middle will remain horizontal. So no matter which angle the steering wheel is turned at, the screen can still be red. We can actually see this in action on another racing title known as Project Cars 3. However, in Horizon 4, you can see that when you turn the wheel, the LCD remains static and doesn't dynamically adjust its position like it does in real life or in Project Cars 3. Now, of course, I've never been in a Yesco and I'm only basing this off very limited resources. So I ask you guys, for those who may be more knowledgeable than me, did Horizon 4 get this wrong or is there another setting that prevents the display from moving? And lastly, inaccurate recycled rubbish. We all know the Forza franchise has been going on for a very long time with its very first title releasing back in 2005 on the original Xbox titled Forza Motorsport. Of course, throughout the years, we've seen major graphical improvements from the original game to Motorsport 2 on the Xbox 360, then Motorsport 3, which introduced every car with full working interior, and then of course in Motorsport 5, where Turn 10 said the game was built from the ground up. So you would imagine that even the cars would be built from the ground up too, right? But nope, they certainly aren't. In fact, a good handful of cars right now in Horizon 4 are quite inaccurate and have been this way even back on the Xbox 360. One example I showcased in a previous episode was with the Volkswagen Scirocco where the copy and paste model actually screwed up the exhaust positions between two rear bumpers and not only that, there's no hood modelling strongly suggesting that this model was brought over from last gen games with upgraded textures. But the two biggest culprits I will be showcasing is first the Subaru Impreza WRX STI 22B. Now, when I was a kid, this was my favorite car. Literally, model cars at home, drawings of this car. And even till this day, if I had the money, I would buy one right away. But Forza's model of this car has been incredibly wrong. First off, the color. In the older titles, they were way off. It wasn't even close to Sonic Blue Mika, but thankfully in Horizon 4 though, it's a lot closer. But what really grinds my gears is that front bumper where the STI fog covers are just way too big to the point where the STI logo looks too large and elongated. Not only that, because the bottom portion of that front bumper is so large, they had to decrease the size of the front headlights in order to keep the proportion of the bonnet in line so the rest of the car wouldn't look out of place, which results in a weird looking front end. Here's a proper photo of the 22B, and as you can see, both the top and bottom bumper along with the grills are quite even in size. I don't know, to me the entire car never looked really on point. But the worst, and people have mentioned this in forums before, and that is the Nissan S15 Silvia. Just look at it, get a proper look. Why does this not look like an S15, but rather more like a normal coupe, like an Acura Accord or something? When you look at the side profile, the back is just simply too low and long, the A pillar is not angled enough and continues along to the B pillar too early, giving the car a less sportier look. And from this angle here, looking towards the rear fender, the car just doesn't come out enough compared to its real life counterpart. I mean, this has been like this since the car was first in a Forza title. Nothing has changed with this Silvia along with the 22B. And I know there are more on the car list in Horizon 4, but I'm not going to go into them because it would just take way too long. But for the next Forza title, whether it's a motorsport or a Horizon, 
please, just no more shortcuts. Quality over quantity. Actually laser scan the cars like you have with the McLaren Senna's and of course the newer cars that have been introduced into the game instead of recycling cars that existed on the Xbox 360. And yes, we're able to tell as well. And as one of the major racing franchises today, expectations are high and that's just the nature of the beast. So there we have it guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button. That would really help me out. And remember, if you guys have any clips that you want to send to me, all of the links will be down in the description below. Any social media will do. And I look forward to all of your submissions. Anyways, if you guys would like to see more Forza Horizon 4 content right here on this channel, make sure to click the subscribe button with notifications turned on. That way you won't ever miss out on another video that goes live. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.